Welcome to GED Math and Dirt News. In these tutorials, I will show you how to solve many of the GED math problems using the TI-30XS scientific calculator. Hello. Welcome to GED Math in 30 Days. Uh, my name is Jeremy Tinsley, and I'll be your instructor, your tutor, your guide, whatever you want to call me. <clears throat> now, hopefully, at the end of these sessions, you purchase the book that I have for sale. After 30 days, uh, you'll have your uh, you have passed your GED math test. That's the whole purpose of these videos. And the purpose of the book is for individuals to be able to pass their GED math exam. <clears throat> so today, our first lesson is basically just to calculate the basics. So you should see on your screen a calculator. Um, if you don't have a physical calculator, you can download uh, from their website, Texas Instruments website. It will be in uh, the video. A link will be in under the video. Um, so you can get this 90 day trial period. Um, so if you download it, you have it for 90 days. And hopefully if you follow along with my book and these lessons, you'll have your GED math test and pass it within 30 days. So let's get started. First of all, the TI-30XS is the only calculator that you can use for the GED exam. So I want to go over some of the basics. Uh, of course, you have your normal operators, your addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fairly easy. Uh, when you want to execute a command, you press enter. And I'm just going to do each one of these real quick so you see how easy they are. And you probably notice it's probably all easy and probably done before. So that's it. That's the basic, uh, basic operators for the calculator. But there's some other things you should be aware with be aware of. Uh, one of the first five questions on your exams have to do uh, with square, squares, square root, cube, and cube roots. So today, uh, part of this first lesson is to show you how to, using the calculator, find squares, square roots, cube, and cube roots. Um, first of all, let me explain. I have the, the mathematical terminology or vocabulary. Square just means a number being multiplied by itself. So for example, three times three is a square, which is nine. But how you would write that as a square using an exponent would be three. You press the three and you see the X squared button here, three squared is also nine. So I wanted to show you that three squared is actually three times three. So with anything that you have a square, you're multiplying it by itself, okay? So right now, what I want to do is I want to, the, the most important concept, especially for the GED, is knowing your squares and your square roots. Not just being able to do them on the calculator, but you should know them. So um, I want you to follow along with me, and we're going to do all the squares. One squared, two squared, press enter. I'm just going to go down the whole line real quick, all the way to 12. Oops, five squared. And you might be saying, oh, that's easy. Why is he having me do one through 12? Because if you're new, I'm sorry, A squared, if you're new to using this calculator, I want you to understand that uh, this, is, this is part of uh, the, the skill set you need in order to pass your test. So you can square any number very easy. Um, you can also square any signed number, but the sign uh, must, you must use a negative sign near enter, but it must be in parentheses, very important. So let me show you that. So minus three squared is minus nine, but minus three to the second power is a positive nine. Because the order of operations, it does the square first and then puts a negative sign. That's why that first answer was negative nine. So to square any number, you must any negative number, you must put it in parentheses first, and then use your negative sign near enter. And then you hit your X squared button and you have your square. So that was fairly easy. And I hope you uh, had full understanding of how to do a square on the calculator. Now, the inverse operation of squaring a number is the square root. Okay, I'm, one of your first five questions are going to be have to do with square, square root, cubic roots. Okay, so let's do square root. Okay, so we just did all the squares. So for example, I'll put 10 squared, which is 100. So I told you that square root is the inverse operation. It's the opposite. So the opposite of multiplication is division. 
The opposite of division is multiplication. The opposite of addition is subtraction. So the opposite of squaring something is the square root. So what I'm going to do is this time, I'm going to use the second key. Why? Because if you notice, uh, you have a lot of commands on this calculator. Anything in green, you have to hit the second function first. And if you notice, you'll see a second inside the up top of the displayed at the top of the calculator. And then we're going to hit the, the same button, the same x squared button. But because we hit second first, it's doing the square root. So square root of 100. So if we look here, 10 squared is equal to 100. We should get the answer 10 back. We should get the base back, which is 10. OK, so let's go down the line. And we're going to do second. Hit x squared for your square root button. We're going to hit 81. We're going to hit our right arrow to get out of the square root. And we're going to press enter. OK, and we're going to do the same thing for all the other square roots. So now we're going to do 64. Second, hit x squared, 64. Get out of your square root, press enter. OK, 49, second, hit the x squared button. 49, get out of your square root, press enter. OK, second, square root, 36, get out and press enter. I'm going to do the rest fairly quick. If you notice, if you make a mistake, for example, I actually put nine first, forgot to put the square root, you want to hit delete. Delete will get rid of one character. Clear here will remove the entire screen or, or remove everything on the screen. So if I hit clear here, it clears the entire screen. Okay, so delete will remove one character at a time. So let's go back, we were at 16, so let's go nine, second, square root nine, get out of your square root, press enter, second, hit the X squared button, oops, put, oops. put four, get out of your square root, press enter, and then last but not least, second, X squared one, press enter. So you should see now that squares and square roots are inverse operations, very important. You have to uh, probably utilize squares and square roots for probably about three questions on your GED exam. So you must be ready to have those type of questions. Now, cube and cube roots. Well, what does a cube mean? Where does it come from? Why, why, what is a cube? So a cube is a three-dimensional shape with all the sides are equal, okay? So if you notice when you did volume, and if you didn't, that's okay. Volume of a cube is length times width times height, but length times width times height, when they're all the same, how you would figure it out would be whatever the side is to the third power. So what does the third power mean? So for example, four to the third power means the base is four times four times four. So four to the third power means you're multiplying four by itself three times. Now, how do you do that on a calculator? Now you could just do multiplication like I did, but there's a shortcut. So let me show you. So if you hit the four right above the X squared, you'll see what's called the carrot button. Hit that carrot button, press your three, that's four to the third power, hit your right arrow, and we get the same thing. Four to the third is 64. So what I usually tell my students, I want them to know uh, one through five or one through six of all the cubes, um, no, any multiple of 10, okay? So, but let's go through it. So one, cubed or one times one times one is easy, that's one. Two cubed is two times two times two, which is eight, okay? Three, carrot, three, get out of your exponent, press enter, so three times three times three is 27, and then we're gonna do the same thing for four, five, and six. So four raised to the third power is 64, Five raised to the third power is 125. Oops. And then 10 cubed, oops, I forgot six, I'm sorry. Six cubed, or six to the third power is 216. So I would commit these to memory. So I would know all my squares to 12. I would know all my cubes to six. And I would also know any multiple of 10. So 10 to the third power is 1,000. Okay, so again, that's very easy. You have a one and then you have three zeros. Well, what is 20 to the third? Okay, so two times two times two is eight. 
and then three zeros, 8,000. Okay, so two to the third is eight, and then you have three zeros, which is uh, 8,000. So that's a quick shortcut to know any multiple of 10 and how to cube it. So those are your, um, your square, your square roots, and your cubes. Well, as I mentioned before, the opposite of squaring something is square root. The opposite of cubing something is cube root. Okay, so now I wanna show you how to find the cube root. And again, I'm only gonna do the first six or in 10, so we'll do that. So we wanna find a cube root of 1000 since the base of 10 to the third is 10, that's what we expect to see. Now, this is a little bit more difficult in order to do the cube root. Um, so if you look on your calculator, you only have x squared and you have square root. So how can we do the cube root? If you see right above the x squared button, you'll see the carrot, the same thing we raised to the power. You can also uh, find the cube root of. So what we're gonna do is we'll hit that three first to let the computer know it's the cube root. We're gonna hit second. We're gonna hit the carrot. And now we see the cube root. So we'll put in a thousand, get out of the cube root and press enter, we expect 10. There you go, okay? So 216 is next, so three. Second, hit the carrot. Get out of your cube root, and you have six. Same thing, so we're gonna do, oops. Now we're gonna do 125, so three. Second, cube root of 125. Press enter to get out of this cube root. Now we're gonna do 64. Again, three, second, Carrot, 64, get out of your cube root, press enter. Again, this takes practice, okay? This is the first day you've probably seen this. If it's not, that's okay. But if it is the first time you see it, practice this for a day or two, just by repetition, just do it over and over and over until you have it down, okay? So now we're gonna do 27, so three, cube root of 27, press enter. And then we're gonna do eight, Three, cube root of eight is two. And then we already know the cube root of one is one, okay? Now, so what I just told you can also be used for radicals. You probably never even heard that term, but it's on your GD exam. They usually have one or two problems that have radicals, okay? So for example, now you know how to type it in, you know how to use your square root, so for example, Three, square root of seven, get out of my square root, plus the square root of seven. Okay, so you can easily now figure out any radical that they're going to give you. Because you can type it in directly into the calculator. Okay, so this is today's lesson. Uh, squares, square roots, cube and cube roots, practice. Do it for about 15, 20 minutes today, tomorrow. Do it for a couple of days, and I'll see you at our next session. Thank you, and hope you enjoyed this video.